Welcome back to Edgewater, Saskatchewan for episode 20 with me, Mr. Silly P. We're back and harvesting is continuing apace. Uh, the situation with regards to picking up straw after the contract um, is a fairly common practice in a lot of places. I'm just going to put that out there. <laughs> you probably know why. Um, a lot of farmers don't bale their own straw swath. Some do, some don't. Some don't bother. They just put it on chop and they don't leave a swath behind. Um, and some farmers, it's kind of like it's there. If you want it, come and bale it and take it away. Get it off the field and then, you know, they might get some bales as part of the deal. But anyway, that, that's so. But we're doing very well out of that. So I'm going to do the same as I did with the wood chip. I'm going to look for a load of things that I can use straw for. Things, I mean, like I say, I don't, it's going to be the manure thing because we've got the slurry depot, the Missy B one, where we can sell our, um, or we sold our slurry. It takes manure as well. With the amount of straw I've got, if I process that, process that into manure, that'll be our silage. That'll, that'll be, we'll make a fortune. Well, I say a fortune. We'll make a lot of money if we go down that route. I haven't said I definitely will. But anyway, as it stands at the moment, I've got, um, a pea harvest to do here. You've seen I've done a few. I've got a pea harvest to do here on field 19. And we haven't been on field 19 yet. Um, as far as the map goes. Uh, where are we? We are here. Field 19. Um, so we've done a few. Six hasn't come up yet. Or one, but they're not ready to harvest yet. Um, but as far as these go, seven. That one hasn't. And we've got one on five. We haven't got one on eight come up yet. This one here, I was hoping... I'm probably going to be, it probably will be anyway. Lentil grad. Like Leningrad, but more lentily. Um, anyway, that field there was lentils. And I was hoping that was going to come up as a contract. And I would add that to the two of my fields. And it would be, you know, an episode of lentils. However, that disappeared. It never came up as an option to have it as a contract. Anyway, let's get on with this. We'll get going on the peas. So once I've done the peas, that's still bouncing. It does stop after a while. Um, I'm going to do the peas, then I'm going to do the lentils. Now the lentils are going to be like, it's like I've always said, I must say I've always said, I have mentioned before, different let's plays, different times. The yield situation, it's the supply and demand like I have, to, I have definitely talked about this before. Things that are rarer cost more. If there's not as much of it, the price goes up. It's when you have um, futures markets and they'll look at crops and they'll put prices on and valuations on. If the crop looks like it's going to do incredibly well, that's good. Everyone's going to get paid. But the crop price then will come down because there's a lot of it. If the crop is scarcer and harder to get hold of, the price goes up generally. The same with wines and I mean the reason gold is so expensive is there's not a lot of it it's a very rare metal the rarer the thing the more expensive it is so things like potatoes sugar beet and sugar cane and the things that yield ridiculously high the prices are very low but when you sell them you'll do all right it's just time consuming there's a lot of labor involved there's a lot of work to do but you'll get paid okay the things that don't yield particularly well pay very well but there's not a lot of it. You find acre for acre, hectare to hectare, it kind of balances out. You know, there will be some crops that are somewhere in the middle where they yield middle of the road, they pay out middle of the road, and you might find if you planted you know, each different crop into the same field one after the other. I mean, that's a test to do, but that will take I mean, a ridiculous amount of time. It could be done, but. Um, and the prices would have to remain fairly stable for that to work. But there, there are crops that you can plant that you will make good money. And the thing is, we, we all, you see the, the you, know, you see the dollar signs, you see the money, the pound signs, you know. And you look at that and go, that pays really well, I'll do a load of that. Soybeans always like, we'll do soybean, soybean pays really well, but it doesn't yield brilliantly. Um, I have found in the past when I did um, Carmston Farm, we did a load of sugar beet 
sugar beet was brilliant on there because I had the sugar milk. And I'm not going to lie, the sugar on Carmston, that would have just kept going and kept going and kept going and kept going. Um, the same as on Western Wilds. It, there was so much sugar beet that, yeah, that I would have made a fortune just selling sugar. So it depends what crop you're going to pick. But anyway, so what I'm, what I'm leading on to say is, whilst we're doing a pea harvest on here, we're going through our lentils, we're not going to get a huge amount of lentils, but it pays out all right. So I don't know whether to keep all the lentils or just to sell them. Now the crops that I've done so far, I had two barley contracts. Both of them had to go to Edgewater Grains. One was on field 30, 32 or 33, which field was it? 32, it was there. And the other one was up here on field, was it 23? What was I saying 12? Might have been 12. Then it was 12 and 32. I did 12 first, took it to Edgewater Grain, and it said it was taking the crop of field 32. So I panicked then, I thought, oh, okay, what do I do? So I couldn't complete this one. Once I'd harvested it all and took it all to Edgewater Grain, it said it had taken it for field 32. I did field 32, and then when I took it, it completed the contract on 12 and then started on contract for 32, which was great. I ended up with 23,000 litres of barley left over after that contract. Um, the oat one I've just done on field 14, was it? I was left with about 9,000 litres of oats. So we've got a little bit of crop. Um, but by far, the, the most I've got, and that's why I'm looking now at what can I do with it? I could bale it and sell it. I could just sell it. I mean, at the end of the day, the straw, I could just sell it at the price it's at and I'd make some money. It wouldn't be great money. So that's why I'm thinking also factoring in buying a facility. So whatever the facility costs for me to do something with the straw, will I make money and cover the cost of that facility? I think I will. I'm saying that because I know how much straw I've got already. And I've got field five to do yet. And field five is barley. So I can do the straw swathing on that as well. Um, I reckon I'm going to be in excess of two and a half million litres of straw. I reckon. We'll see when we come out the other end. Maybe we will. Maybe we won't. I'll pay attention. Sit beast. Talk. The two trailer situation is working out really well. I'm going to go and grab the trailer now. Yeah, I'm happy with the way that's working. I'm also in my head thinking, if I'd gone for the XLs, which are 200,000 litre capacity, two of them slung together, the fact they do hook up as well is brilliant. But yeah, two of them together, 400,000 litres, it wouldn't matter the size of the field, I wouldn't have to keep going backwards and forwards. But like I said, that's not... It's not realistic, I know, but I just keep thinking back to Bjornholm on FS15, and it was the Flegel Bull was the trailer that hooked together. And I remember doing forage harvesting, uh, doing a silage harvest on one of the fields, and I had a string of 10, 11, 12 trailers <laughs> all hooked together. Um, it was brilliant. I loved it. So I was thinking, you know, could add another one to this, that could be 90,000 litres. I'd need the horsepower to pull it, which to be fair, this pickup, when they're heavy, it struggles, because I've been using these for doing the, the crop, and I've been using these for um, doing the straw collection as well. So, hmm. actually, you know what, before we put, actually, what I'll do is when we pull up, I'll pull up and we'll, um, we'll check on the, uh, the lentil price because I might just sell the lentils straight out. I don't need them for anything. I was thinking, why is that not now? Because the harvester's turned off. There we go. That was the thing I wanted to check. Let's go in and have a look under our because we were still still thinking of doing pigs, haven't we? Come off that idea. Um, yeah, the pigs don't they don't take lentils. They take peas though. I have got some peas. We'll see if we get any left over from this. I'll keep hold of the peas, but the lentils they don't take, so there's no point keeping all the lentils. 
potatoes I've got growing, corn I've got, Yeah, um, it's just making sure I've got the, the, the three different crop types, you know, your cereals and your, your root crops and your starchy more sort of that kind of stuff. Um, and then your oily ones, your sunflower oil, canola, and soybean. I haven't got, oh, we've got soybean actually, haven't we? Yeah. So potentially with peas, we could have enough when the potatoes are ready to do some. Um, Yeah, we could have enough to do some. Oh yeah, I was going to check on the price of the uh, lentils. No, not that one. That one. Where are we? What's it paying at the moment? Yeah, one four. That was. I looked. I know I looked in the last episode, but it doesn't hurt to have a double check. Price has come down. The Northern Mills was the highest, and they're dropping. Although Farmers Market and Fast Food Restaurant are coming up, but they're not paying as well. Sell everything one four and falling. I need to get onto those. So I need to get this harvest done as quick as possible. Get onto the lentils. I'm almost thinking actually now, am I better off going and doing my lentils while the price isn't up a little bit? No, no, I'll finish this. So I'll get the pea harvest finished on here. Then we can get paid for it, and then we'll. Um, I'm hoping to get some left over. Though those trailers unload very, very quickly. So what I've been doing is when I come to um, dropping them off, selling them when I've finished a harvest, I put it on grain door rather than regular unload. That way it unloads a bit slower, I say a bit slower, a lot slower, but you've got a lot more control over when to stop the unload when you complete the contract, so you can keep the maximum amount of crop out of it if you want to. Like I say, you don't have to, you can just sell it all and get the money for it, but it doesn't hurt to have some of those crops backed up. So if you do get production or you do get animals or something that requires them for feed, and you've got some stuff there. I've got barley now, like I said, and we've still got wheat left. So we can get onto chickens as well now. I can get some chickens going. I'll tell you what I was thinking of doing. You know on Western Wilds we did the, the big chicken coop. We did 5,000 chickens. We like doing a massive chicken farm. Actually, I think we've done. Let's just double check that. Just thinking with the money we've got, uh, crop types. Oh, they've all been harvested. Well, no, eight hasn't, has it? That's got barley in it. How much does that cost? 270 grand. Oh, I haven't got enough. I was going to say, um, buy a wheat field or a barley field. And just keep the wheat and barley have a hundred thousand litres of the stuff and then have like 20,000 chickens have a massive chicken farm just think the amount of eggs it would be insane they're all options Peas are done, and we got a few more. I think we're up to about 32,000 litres of peas stored as well, so that's going great. Uh, I went up the road and started doing the barley harvest on field five and completely forgot to come down here and do my lentils. So 
lentils it is. Um, I need to bring the blue trailers back down because I took those up to field five as well. You know what it's like. You get in the zone. I was listening to an audio book and I just bounced from field to field and then suddenly remembered, oh yeah, <laughs> what's this episode about? We're doing lentils, aren't we? Um, so, what we'll do is we'll start that up. Let's see it going. First time doing lentils. We've done peas. We did flax last year. We did a flax harvest. The difference this year, as I've already mentioned, is we're going to be doing the swathing for the flax. But for peas, it's our first time. It's a bit bumpy over the ground, but it's all right. And it's not yielding particular at all. I've got two very small fields. <laughs> I'm just looking up. Everything else I've harvested, as I've been going along, it's been like 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. Oh, this is yielding really well. This is not. And I did everything to this as well. But as I said when I was doing um, the peas, I don't, I don't have a frame of reference. It's, you know, yes, it's yielding low, it's yielding what it should be yielding, but as I did everything to it, the field was prepped as it should have been. Um, but these, as I said earlier, they yield low. They pay out well, but they yield low. So I reckon <laughs> this is the fall of lentil brands, not... <laughs> oh. <laughs> Well, yeah, we'll do a load of lentils, we're going to make a load of money. We'll make some money, but these are going to go up to the northern mill, I think. I reckon we're going to get about, bear in mind what we've done already, this field and that field. 21, 10,000 litres? I don't know if we'll get that. Mm. But hey, it's a different crop type I've never done before. get to a thousand. We'll definitely have a thousand litres. Brilliant. Now I'm thinking we're going to get 10,000 litres. We might. Now we're looking inside. Okay, we need it one and a half. <laughs> so, I'll see the end of this field. It's a little bit worried.
I'm not going to lie, it's kind of worrying. Uh, I, I'm not sure we're going to get 10,000. We haven't even hit three and a half on this one. Um, I think the other field's a little bit bigger. Anyway, we'll find out. <laughs> I have jet washed the harvester. It was looking absolutely filthy. It doesn't look like it's done much work. We're up to, what, nearly, well, 4.2 hours on this already. Head is too wide for me to fit. Um, something there. It's moving. There we go. Yeah, to fit across the bridge. So we'll hook it up the other side, and we'll see. <laughs> we'll see if we can do a bit better. Oh dear. Oh dear. Do I say that I need to mulch these so they have to be mulched? I'm just doing that. I've got to be careful of the ditch here though. Probably shouldn't be going down the ditch with this harvester. Well, I'll be alright because I've got twins on there. We just kind of, kind of stayed out of the ditch a little bit. Build two. I'm thinking I might put sugar beet on these two. I mean, these were the two fields we started off with. They were cheap, they were small, we didn't have a lot of money. I thought we'd put some stuff in them. We did grass originally, then we put the, the uh, lentils in. But because we've bought a bigger field now, hopefully with the situation after harvest, and if we do, what are we going to do with the straw? Like I said, I still haven't decided yet. Um, considering that's the resource we've got the most of, it makes sense to do something with it. We can then buy another big field, which means our smaller fields can be repurposed for something else. So sugar beet seems like a logical solution. There's not a sugar mill. There's not a sugar mill here. I don't think there is. Oh hang on. Let me just check on the map. Um What's down here? What have we got? Dairy, bakery, uh, grain mill. That's the sawmill. Red bowl, red marble bowling. No, there's not, is there? And up here we've got cell points, spinnery, farmer's market, debris crusher. No, there's not. So potentially, is there, is there a cheap sugar mill that we could put in? Like really cheap. <laughs> so we do sugar beet. No. Or I could, I could put these back as grass. I could have these as pastures, maybe. I need land, so I guess if I decided I was going to do... I'm going to have to put pigs somewhere. Although, to be fair, I might put a pig pen on the plot up at the main farm where the um, where that slurry production was that we put in that didn't kind of work out as we thought when I took it back out again. Um, I could put the pigs up there. I could... We're going to do cows, we can put cows on one of these, I suppose. So I guess putting grass back in might not be a bad idea on these, since we've got the, the two really big fields now. Yeah, maybe. Okay, well, we're at four and a half. I don't think we can. Oh, okay. We didn't quite get there. <laughs> we didn't even get to 9,000. Close. It's one of those ones where if you're gonna do it, because it pays well, you need a lot. Big fields, loads of it. But 
we've done it as a test and like I said on here flax peas lentil crops I've never done before so it's nice doing something a little bit different anyway so I'm going to come back with mulch and then I'm going to put grass in I'm not sure about the situation I'm mean, what I'm going to do this time round is um I'm going to nitrogen before I put the crop in the ground because I'm sure the nitrogen's linked to the um, soil. Oh, my environmental scores plummeted. That's because I've harvested, I suppose. Oh, mind you, I bought that field and that didn't have a lot done to it. So that's going to need work doing next time round. Yeah, so that's what we'll do, right? Yeah, 8,733 litres up to the northern mill. I'm going to sell it. Like I say, there's not. Um, I don't think there's a production I can do with it and I don't I can't use it for pig food I don't think any of the animals take it so we'll sort it out let's get it taken up and sold and then I will head and what I might do I might do the mulching now actually I'll get the mulcher over and um, I'm just thinking whether or not it's worth next time round on the big field doing something like doing a mass of lentils just to, an absolutely colossal lentil harvest but I suppose if you can do that if you can use up that much ground you might be better off doing cotton or you know something you know is going to make an absolute fortune loads of land it's expensive for the harvester to lease it is assuming you only go for one um, we haven't been to the northern mill yet, have we? I came up here to do some mowing when I was doing the baling, which we're almost at a point now. The grass is all regrowing again. I can get out and do another cut of grass, so I might do another ton of bales as well, but that'll be an off camera job. Um, it's around the other side, is it? I think it's around the other side. So we'll sell these and I'll say, I'll, I'll go and grab the mulcher, I'll bring that down. Where is it? Um, oh, under there. I'm looking in, where's the sell point? Just under there. So let's sell these. So this is going to make us, what, 15 grand maybe? Something like that? Oh, have I got it on my own grain door? Well, <laughs> okay. All that work, two fields for 12 grand. <laughs> the fall of lentil grad. Well, I've got more work to do, so. See you later.
here's where we currently stand. I mean, I'm currently standing here, but as a farm goes, harvest is being very good to us. It's now quarter to three. Sun is due to come back out. I've just unloaded the last of the straw from field five. Now I've got two more, two more barley contracts. One on field two, one on field 35. I'm taking the straw for those. Field eight still hasn't come up yet. And that will do at some point. That's a fair size. So I've got plenty more straw I can get as well as the crop. Um, field five I've finished. You've just, you should have seen that. I've got paid for that. I've now got a cultivating contract on there for 22 grand. I've got my own cultivator. It's not a very big cultivator, but I'll, I'll chug around that. As far as crops left over after harvests, the two big barley fields I did and the combined one, I'm now sitting on 49,000 litres of barley, 9,497 litres of oats. In here, 1,651,000 litres of straw. I said I thought I'd get to in excess of 2.5. Over here, in our hayloft, we've got a million litres. That hayloft is full. So we've got 2.6 million litres of straw at the moment and more to come. Peas, you saw me putting into there. We're now sitting on 32,000 litres of peas in here. We've got wheat and other products in here as well. So I've mulched the fields. You saw that as well. Both my fields have been mulched. I'm going to take the cedar out and I'm going to grass them both. I said I was thinking about doing it. I'm going to grass them both. So I'm going to go out and I'm going to start on the cultivating and then the, the two barley contracts, they'll continue. I'll, I'll kind of get those done as I'm chugging along. But it's time to take a straw poll to see what I did there. We've got a lot of straw and I was saying about options and what I could do with it. So these are the options I'm considering. There are pros and cons. Um, some because I've used them before and I said I was going to try and I was going to try different things but there is a limit of, of things that you can do like straight up straw processing there's not a huge amount um, things that require straw as a product within something else there are a few more but at my little production building over there where I'm, I've been making things I can do a straight straw silage a one-to-one -one. I've got a million litres sitting in there so I could do a million litres of silage. Now we've already seen when I've done my silage baling, a million litres made me about 300 grand. If the price comes up, I could make more than that on that million litres. I've got more I can get and more I'm going to do. So I, that is one option. Option two, straw processing. The building that made straw hats that I did on Griffin, Indiana. Straw hats and straw baskets. That's very lucrative. That just requires straw and water and that works very well so that's the second option i'd have to buy the building which isn't too expensive um and a sell point so what i would do is that as an online business so i'd have the production and the sell point right next to it so as i'm producing them i can store them if i want i can produce them store them and then sell them straight on online they pay pretty well so that's a second option uh third option was Oh, the manure production that I've done before. The manure factory by FSPT. I've done that one before. And that is uh, a one to three. I kept saying one to four before, but I, think, I don't think it is straight one to four. Um, straw goes in, manure comes out, and I can sell the manure. Exactly as I did when I sold the slurry. That's an option. That's not too expensive. That's 20 grand. Um, and then I can just, I mean, I could stick a million litres through that and end up with three million litres of manure that I can sell you know, if I'm selling that at 500 for a thousand litres, that's a big chunk of change. That's why doing the straw the way I'm doing it, getting that as a, you know, it, it wasn't, I just thought we're going to harvest, I'll do the harvests and I'll get some crop left over and we'll have some stuff we can do and we'll get some fertising jobs and some, like we're doing now. A little bit of, I mean, this is a massive field, it's going to take a long time with this cultivator, but I own this cultivator, so I'm not going to lose any money on the contract. So this is one of those ones I can just chug around. Or oh, to be fair, I'm at a point now I can hire a worker um, if I'm doing other things as well. I can then come back out again as I've done before. As you can see, we've got big stones coming up. I can do my rock picking. I can fill up my lime production and I can start selling my lime as I was doing before. Because if I've got plenty of rock, there's no reason at all why I can't sell it. So I've got a load more stuff I can be doing. So yeah, so that's I've, I've gone off on a sidetrack there. But um, so there's manual production as well. Then lastly, 
The one I'm least keen on doing, because the setup costs are quite a lot more, um, we did wood pellets. I've done wood pellets before. I did those on Griffin, and that's through a carpentry. And you just put your wood chips in and you get wood pellets out. But there is a pellet production. A little bit like, you remember the straw add-on that we had? It's kind of like that. Um, and it will do wood pellets, hay pellets, or straw pellets. Now that one requires the building, which is 125 grand. It also requires in the process of any one of those three, it requires water and molasses. So you have to buy a molasses silo. You buy the molasses and then... I think you transport it. I don't think you can distribute it. You transport it. So I'll put it right next door. You just need a little tanker to put it next to it. And you can produce straw pellets. The straw pellets pay out well. I think around... I mean, it depends what economy you're on. And it depends what map, of course. Sometimes it fluctuates. But about seven, 800 for a 1,000 litres, which is pretty good. But the ratio of production... Um, for straw in, I think it's 1,000 straw in, and then the molasses, and then the water, and you only get for that recipe 300 of pellets out. So it's a reduction on that one. So whilst you are making pellets and they do pay out all right, there are a lot of other inputs required. It's expensive to set up, and the returns aren't as good. So it's weighing up. Okay, those are realistic at the moment. My kind of four I'm looking at. Um, had I not thought about collecting the straw after the contracts, had I not thought about using the forage header to collect straw off the contract fields, these wouldn't even be an option on the table. But if I'm going to be sitting on in excess of 3 million litres of straw, I'm using it. Of course I'm using it. Why wouldn't I? Um, seeing as my, um, my lentil empire crashed and burned. <laughs> oh dear. It was a great idea. It was for the people lentil bread it was for the people and it just yeah unless I go in massive fields and loads of it it's not going to pan out at the moment but hey when life gives you straw you make straw aid so those are kind of my options what do people think I could do combinations of I mean realistically I think the straw processing hats and baskets is 60 grand to buy the um, manure production is 20 grand to buy and that's that's probably one of the better ones i think although the, the hats and baskets pays very well i think for a thousand liters or for each one it's something like two and a half grand i'm actually i've got them um kind of good to go so what we can do is let's go into here and let's check out the pricing I'm sure it was. It's up there. So, like I say, the, these are kind of the options I'm looking at, and why not? Uh, so, right, straw accessories. Yeah, look, straw accessories. That's the hats and straw crate. Now, that to me, that's a winner. Online selling straw hats and straw and straw crates. Why not? That kind of makes the most sense to me. Um, Manure price was sitting at, where's that, that's with my, there we go, um, at the slurry yard, Missy B slurry yard, 540. So if I do the manure production, that's a nice little earner. And like I said, if I just do my straight um, straw silage, a one-to-one -one ratio, um, silage wasn't paying out as well, was it? I don't know if I don't. I'm trying to think now. That was two something, wasn't it? Yeah, 277. So I've got options. I could do combinations of, I could do one. I'm thinking of doing potentially three of them. I've already got the silo for, for doing silage. I can just do straw silage. I can just switch that on, bang, straw silage, get that going. I'm thinking the manure production, the manure factory, run that, and getting the straw processing and doing the hats and baskets. I've got plenty of straw. That will set us up really well for moving into the new year. Potentially, if I do it quick enough, if I get the straw processing going with the hats and whatever, if we make enough money, we could buy another big field. Potentially another big flax field 
before we move into flax harvesting time. So yeah, that, those are the options. What do people think? Um, we'll see how we go. I'm going to get this done. I'm going to get some more work done. I'm going to see you in a little while. I'm probably, I'm just trying to think. Um, I'm trying to think if my, I don't think my cedar, maybe it is. Oh, my planter cedar, is it a direct drill? I can't remember. The YP, I don't think it is. The problem is using this cultivator, this brings up big stones and um, well in places it seems to be doing small stones and other places big stones. Um, I'm going to, need to cultivate my fields, I need to line my fields and then I'm going to put grass in them. So I've got some other bits and bobs to do. So yeah, that's where we're at. That's the ideas I've got. Um, lots of work to be cracking on with. I'll see you in a little bit. I'm just curious to see how much more straw I can get. I mean, I can put the silage production on now because I've already got that in that silo and I can get that chugging away. I'm still going to do more silage barrels again once the grass is all grown again. Why not? I'm paying a thousand pounds a day, thousand pounds, thousand dollars a day um, to the Chamber of Commerce for the um, license to cut the verges. So I'll be mad not to if I'm paying for that privilege. Um, I'll do bales again at some point because they paid out nicely. It's all things that tick over. If I can do something like that and earn 300,000, that's potentially a new lorry, a new trailer, a new tractor, you know, another big field or towards that. So that's how I need to be making my money at the moment. Western Wilds, it was just logging. I was just honking through the trees, but I can't do that on here. So that's where we're at. I'll see you in a little while. The cultivating is now done on field five. The barley harvest is done on field two. And I've taken the straw off that. I've started taking the straw off of field 35. The harvesting is done on there as well. Um, I was left with, because both of them had to go to Edgewater, so I harvested both, put them into the trailers, took that to Edgewater, and I was left with 13,000 litres. So we're up to over 60,000, I think 63,000 litres of barley we've now got which is fantastic. Where did I leave the forage pick up? I suppose technically, doing the harvesting this time round, we're actually harvesting straw. <laughs> the harvest crops are the byproduct, I guess. That's kind of the way to look at it this time round. This will fill up quite quick, it has been. I've been going kind of backwards and forwards a fair old bit. You can probably tell because the tractor, this tractor that I bought, and I didn't buy it that long ago, We've got 18.7 hours on this one. So I'll take another load. So with what I just took, uh, we're up to over 3 million litres. I did set off the uh, straw silage going in my little production building. And I think I was only up to about 3,000 litres on that so far. Actually, what I can do is we can complete on, make sure I do the right one, fill two. Yep, we're on field 35, aren't we? That's completely done. And the thing is, as well, looking at these contracts now, I'm looking down here thinking, ones that I would normally kind of be, oh, you know, is it really worth... It's 2,000 for doing that wheat harvest. Um, I've got my own equipment. I won't have any crop left over, but I'll get paid two grand. Is it worth doing? Now, yeah, it is worth doing. Because that wheat and the oats and the barley will leave me straw behind and the straw is worth money so it actually being able to do this makes those little contracts on small fills that you think what's the point of bothering i know it seems a bit you know it is worth bothering so yeah i'll clear i'll clear this up yeah so three, we got a million liters i've just top re topped up that the hay loft and I've put some more into the other one. We were on 1.6 million there, that's now just tipped over two. So we've got three million litres all told. I reckon we'll probably get another, probably a couple of loads off here. So we'll be up to about 3.2, I guess. Field date still hasn't come up. And like I say, if I pick off some of those other contracts, and there are a few there to pick off, uh, we'll be all right. Let's do that. I need to turn it off for a second. Do that. The pipe won't quite blow it into the trailer at the back. I did try to leave them connected and I thought it might reach. 
it starts off doing it and then it just gives up so it's just easier to switch the trailers around if you were running multiplayer or playing with a friend or something like that while one of you carries on the other one could then take the other one back but because these all hook up it's quite straightforward it goes at a fair pace so it's not um it doesn't take too long I was intending to end the episode with me actually doing my uh, liming however once I hooked up to the lime spreader and put some in to top it up I realised I was in the outfield so we're going to head down pick up some fuel then I'll go and get that done as I was saying I, I don't know if I'm going to pick up some of the other contracts the small ones I might well do there's a couple of wheat ones there's a couple of barley ones and a couple of oat ones they shouldn't take too long they're fairly small fields with not a lot to collect but if it gives me the straw I probably will I don't We'll see. It depends whether Field 8 comes up as an option because if that comes up, I'll jump on that because that, that might give me some more. So with the barley as well, how much of that I've got, I'm definitely thinking chickens is an option sooner rather than later as well. Whether I'm going to do what I said and go for like, you know, I mean, I could, oh, I don't know, go for like mega chickens, you know. Maybe it wasn't too expensive. But um, actually, as I was driving down here as well, I was thinking, I'm putting a f quite a few hours on my tractors and also I'm coming down here and refilling quite a lot so I think what we might do as well is get ourselves a fuel um, uh, fuel tank at the farm one that we can get a company in to top up whenever we need to I think that's going to make life a little bit easier because I keep having, also having to it's, again it's not far is it to drive out to the fuel station but it would make more sense to have one on the farm itself so uh, that's what I'm going to do, I think. So yeah, next episode, we'll see what the results of the straw poll are and what I've decided to do with that. Um, that was, again, that wasn't something I was intended to do. I was going to I was going to skip ahead until the flax was ready and move on to swathing, which again, we are going to get to. But um, yeah, this is kind of, yeah, gone down a route I wasn't really um, expecting. So I was expecting to get straw because I was going to get the straw off the fields. I wasn't expecting as much as I've got. I think that's probably what, what I'm trying to say. Anyway, um, I hope you're enjoying what I'm doing. I'm hope, I hope you're enjoying seeing the progress on the farm, seeing seeing my thought process. And that's something I've always tried to do is what, what I'm thinking I verbalise and then try and do and show and explain. Um, I always say at the end of the episode, I hope you're enjoying it. And that's kind of very generic, isn't it? But I hope you're enjoying the process and what I'm doing. And, you know, um, and if you are, please give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.